What's up everyone and welcome back to the comms channel. Today's video is going to be the start of a new series of videos I'll be doing on signals intelligence. In this first video I'm going to cover a topic that there is some interest in from my recent video on the Kenwood THD 75 where I showed a clip of a flight tracker. So for today's video I'm going to show you how to build your own flight tracker with a Raspberry Pi and SDR to receive signals from the aircraft directly. I'll also introduce this script I'm working on that will use this data to alert on specific aircraft or situations and then send the alert via telegram. So hang around and we'll get into it. Soda 82 Heavy, contact departure. Over departure, Soda 82. Two is here, boys, I'm going to grab four miles west of the Hyperdeer Okay, I'll be back in 60 seconds. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. In addition to my radio hobby, another hobby of mine is aviation, and with the advent of ADSB, I can combine two of my favorite hobbies together and listen into aircraft communications while watching them on a radar like screen. This ADSB capability also offers a great opportunity for collecting signals intelligence as well that we'll be getting into. If you're unfamiliar with what ADSB is, it stands for Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. And it's something that the FAA mandated that all aircraft have back in 2020 if they're flying in Class A, B, C, and sometimes E airspace. Now that covers a decent amount of airspace and airports, so a good number of aircraft are equipped with ADSB now because of this. Now what ADSB does is constantly transmits information about the aircraft's registration, GPS location, speed, altitude, direction, and more on 1090 megahertz. And this information is transmitted to help air traffic controllers and other aircraft can use this information for traffic avoidance. But this also allows us to be able to pick these signals up with an SDR and use software to display this information on a map. There are many options for receiving aircraft with ADSB, but for this video, I'm going to cover what I found to be the best and easiest setup to get off the ground. So let's quickly go over some of the components we'll be using for this project. First, we have a Raspberry Pi 4, and these were hard to get for a while, but things are much better now. You still need to check the RPI locator's website or follow them on Twitter to be alerted. Uh, they're typically in stock for hours now instead of minutes like before. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 4 GB model, but any Pi 4 or Pi 3 will work. You can also use a Pi Zero 2W, but those are still hard to find. Next we'll have the Software Defined Radio or SDR. Radar Box has a nice SDR and antenna kit that you can get that we'll be using to connect the Raspberry Pi and capture the ADSB signals and decode them. And the kit will also have an antenna that is tuned for 1090 megahertz. We'll of course also need a micro SD card to flash the operating system image on and finally the power supply. That covers the parts. Now let's take a look at the software side of things. For that, I'm using the SD card image from ADSB Exchange. It's quick and easy to set up and has a lot of features. So here we have the main page, which you can access by going to adsbexchange.local on your web browser after setup. Here there are various configuration related things that we'll get into later, but let's take a look at the map by clicking on the 1090 map link here. Here we have the main map and all of the aircraft I'm picking up with the setup here. As you can see here, we're picking up aircraft across multiple states. And if we click on one of the planes here on the map, you can get more information on it, like its speed, altitude, heading, and even a picture of the plane. And this isn't just a picture of the same type of plane either. This is a picture of the actual plane uh, flying over you at the moment. If you look at the picture here, the plane's end number, you'll see that it matches that of the plane currently flying over. There will be some cases, however, where there is no picture, and this is often the case with these smaller private planes, but usually anything that's an airliner or military airplane will, will have a picture associated with it. There is a wide variety of maps available. Uh, I like the darker maps, so I usually have this Carto Dark enabled. But there's also a Carto Light version if you prefer. 
Then there's also a road map if you like to see more details like road names and, and parks. And here it looks like we have this Grumman Tiger here that had an interesting flight path. And looks like he's flying around and checking things out at the, the lake here. There's also the ability to get the weather radar displayed on the map. Whenever there's severe weather, you can see where all the aircraft change course to avoid these uh, stronger cells. Another cool feature is you can also display the U.S. Air Force air-to-air -air refueling routes on the map. And uh, here we have AR-328, which is near me, and I've listened to the communications between the planes and the re refuelers many times on this route. Which brings me to the next feature. In the top right of the interface, you'll see these U, H, and T buttons. If you click on the U, this will set the map to only show military aircraft. It's not very busy at the moment, but here we can see this group of T-38 Talons, which are military training aircraft. So let's take a look at some of these buttons on the right here. There's this M button that will allow you to select multiple aircraft. So if we select the three trainers we're looking at here, we can see their tracks and it looks like they all took off from the same place. If we unselect the M button and select a plane we're interested in and then click the I button, that will isolate the plane and only show that one on the map, which can be helpful if there's a ton of aircraft on the screen and you want to just focus on the one you're interested in. So that was the map and the basics around that. There's more you can do, but I just wanted to go through the basics of navigating the map and some of the cool features on it. Another nice thing about this setup is you can see the tracks of the past eight hours of flights. This can be a bit resource intensive, so a Raspberry Pi 4 would be ideal if using this tracks map. So on the right here, we can see all of the aircraft information for the past eight hours. Also, just like on the main map, we can click on the U and only show military aircraft and it looks like we've had a number of military aircraft in the area if we click on the track we'll see info on the plane that made the track in this case it's poison 5 which is one of the t-38 trainers we saw earlier looks like it stayed in a pattern for a bit at Tyson's and did some touch and goes before heading southwest so that's it for the 8 hour track map. You can do a lot of the same things with this map, but it's just 8 hours of data instead of live data like the other map. The next thing to show you is the Graphs 1090 interface here. Here we'll see a number of graphs with info on the ADSB data and system information. So here we have the ADSB message rate and messages per second, number of aircraft seen, ADSB track seen, signal level, and other ADSB related items. To help keep an eye out for potential issues, we also have some system related info like CPU utilization, CPU temperature, memory, bandwidth, and disk usage. The setup is great and has worked well, but there's one feature that I would like that it doesn't do and that is alerting. So to fix that, I've been working on this script that will check the aircraft data every 30 seconds and alert on specific aircraft you specify in a list in a text file. Aircraft also use what are called squawk codes, which is one of the items sent in the ADSB transmissions. This is usually a number provided to the pilot by air traffic control, but there are some squawk codes that have a specific meaning that the pilots can select in certain situations that I felt would be good to alert on. The script will look for planes on the list you provide and also look at all aircraft to see if any of them are using any of these squawk codes and then send you an alert via Telegram. I went with Telegram since it's very easy to set up your own bot to send you these alerts. But I'll provide a detailed guide on setting this bot up along with configuring the script in a future video. But that'll do it for this video. I just wanted to give a quick overview of the setup, the interface, and the alerting script that I've been working on. And the next video will be going through the Raspberry Pi setup and getting the script set up and alerting. Hopefully you found this video informative and useful. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you all and have a good one.